Welcome to Living Life. Uh, have you been uh, in uh, places and uh, you're driving and you're consumed with uh, so much anger that uh, you want to retaliate, immediate re retaliation? Uh, I, I'm a pastor and uh, uh, when I'm driving in the street of Korea is that uh, sometimes is that uh, traffic is uh, very aggressive and uh, and there is no order, and uh, people are driving uh, very uh, uh, aggressively. And uh, sometimes you want to have immediate retaliation. Uh, and sometimes is that I see that uh, I, as uh, I do counseling, and I see people that uh, they have a fight. Uh, that uh, is uh, people that who married uh, early marriage, and that they start arguing and. Uh, and they fight, and uh, immediately right after husband leaves to work, and uh, the wife is start breaking everything, throwing things away. So I seen that because so much anger that you need to do something, you need to break something, or you have to throw something. And same thing that uh, we're gonna discuss it today is that uh, you know Israel waged a war because uh, they saw. A, a, a concubine was cut into 12 pieces. They had an immediate reaction of uh, blood and uh, human being cut into pieces. You know, there is the, no uh, 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 rational thoughts that uh, they go through their mind. Is that uh, the first thing that they have is uh, retaliation. You know, we're going to do the, something about these guys that, who raped this woman. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Judges 21, verses 1 to 15. The men of Israel had taken an oath at Mizpah. Not one of us will give his daughter in marriage to a Benjamite. The people went to Bethel, where they sat before God until evening, raising their voices and weeping bitterly. O Lord, the God of Israel, they cried, why has this happened to Israel? Why should one tribe be missing from Israel today? Early the next day, the people built an altar and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Israelites asked, Who from all the tribes of Israel has failed to assemble before the Lord? For they had taken a solemn oath that anyone who failed to assemble before the Lord at Mizpah should certainly be put to death. Now the Israelites grieved for their brothers, the Benjamites. Today, one tribe is cut off from Israel, they said. How can we provide wives for those who are left, since we have taken an oath by the Lord not to give them any of our daughters in marriage? Then they asked, Which one of the tribes of Israel failed to assemble before the Lord at Mizpah? They discovered that no one from Jabash Gilead had come to the camp for the assembly. For when they counted the people, they found that none of the people of Jabash Gilead were there. So the assembly sent 12,000 fighting men with instructions to go to Jabash Gilead and put to the sword those living there, including the women and children. This is what you are to do, they said kill every male and every woman who is not a virgin. They found among the people living in Jabash Gilead 400 young women who had never slept with a man, and they took them to the camp at Shiloh in Canaan. Then the whole assembly sent an offer of peace to the Benjamites at the Rock of Ramon. So the Benjamites returned at that time and were given the women of Jabash Gilead who had been spared, but there were not enough for all of them. 
the people grieved for Benjamin, because the Lord had made a gap in the tribes of Israel. Main passage of the uh, book of Judges is that Israel had no king, and they did the things in their life that it was they saw as a fit, and they did the things according to their thoughts and according to their righteous righteousness or uh, or according to their culture, as well as according to uh, their manners and. Uh, they always bring a flesh uh, thoughts and also it's very ungodly because they did things out of their senses. And that's a, a study of a, a book of Judges. And uh, today is the passage is that uh, uh, they are waging a war, a uh, war between Israel, uh, the whole uh, uh, tribe, 11 tribes against the one tribe of Benjamite. Uh, and uh, the number is outrageous. 400,000 Israelis fighting against 26,000 Benjamites. And uh, they go into the war three times, uh, the battle three times. And, uh, and we learn today that uh, Israel, 400,000 people, wins the war. So there is a saying in, in the States that uh, uh, you can lose the battle, but then you don't lose the war. And this is the case that uh, I see that uh, Israel people, they lose two battles uh, to Benjamite, even though numbers are outrageous, uh, outnumbered. And, uh, and they said, hey, we have 400,000 men fighting against 26,000 uh, men, and uh, how come we are losing the battle? And they realized that, you know, they relied upon 400,000, the number, rather than God. They never uh, seek the God. And today is that they are seeking the God. Instead of having immediate retaliation, they said, hey, why we lost the two battles? Uh, uh, I know that the Benjamites fight a really good fight. They have a 700 men of a left-handed that uh, they can throw the slings that uh, in the, uh, to cut the hair of the people. And uh, that means that uh, they are really sharpshooters and they are good people, uh, good fighters. They have a good infantry. But then we have a number. We have 400,000. Why we are losing this battle? Two times. And uh, they go to the Bethel and they ask God, Hey, God, uh, I, I, what happened to our battle? And uh, there is a thing here that uh, he says that, uh, uh, What happened? And uh, they start weeping and start repenting. Uh, they are coming to God, they are fasting, and uh, they are giving offering, offering of uh, a peace and the offering of a burnt offering. They said, I repented. Uh, there is a small things in our life that uh, we miss. We go to church, we study the Bible, and we pray, and we do everything that we say, but then sometimes goes wrong, I'm losing the battle. Sometimes, Sometimes I know that the war is won uh, because the war, the victory is already there by the cross of Jesus Christ. But then I'm walking to the battle and sometimes I'm losing it. Why is that? It's the small things that in our life that we are missing and that makes us lose a battle. You know, I ride a, motor, a motorcycle. One of my bucket list is that uh, going out. Uh, Enduro motorcycle to uh, Mongo and having a cross country uh, rally there. And uh, last time they had and uh, uh, failed to finish the race is because there was a small, small leak in the radiator that nobody could see. Uh, is that just uh, just small? But uh, engines to, it would fall, and so that did not uh, finish the race. Same thing is in our life is that we cannot really finish the race or the battle is because that there is a small things in our life that we are missing. Maybe we should consider, just like the passage goes, they wept because they lost the battle. If you are losing battle and you are, uh, God, where is the thing that I am missing? Where is the small leak in my life that I need? Start asking God and repenting first. God, 
forgive me. That I did my own ways, but then I want to do your ways. Second thing is that maybe we should fast. Because the fasting is that is a wonderful thing, spiritual things that we could, uh, God revealed to you in our life. Sometimes that the, my day, my schedule is go, I work and study and I teach. And I go that, but in back of my mind is that, what should I have lunch for lunch? You know, when I call to my wife and she said, you know, what are you cooking for tonight? Right, right in the middle of the day. So is that uh, if you fast, you know, you have so much time, your, your thoughts are so much focused upon God instead of food and the carnal things. And that maybe we should fast. And the third thing that we should do is that we just give an offering. Give offering, the peace offering. Go to brothers and sisters and say, hey, I'm sorry, I did the wrong. And maybe that, we, we, could you forgive me? You know, maybe if I offended you, just, just forgive me. You know, we want to make a peace. And uh, give a good handshake from the heart. Maybe that's the way that we should do. And uh, give it to the Lord, a commitment. Say, God, I want to be with you. I want to commit with you. So is that those four things brings to your life. Uh, you can sometimes we lose the battle. But then we can not lose the war. And the battle that we choose to fight, you know, make sure that God is in there. And make sure that spiritual welfare is won by Him and through Him for Him. That's what we're going to walk in today. And the passage teaches, teaches us very, very clearly that people of Israel won because they came to the Lord. Those, those two, they lost the people. Two battles they lost is because they did out of their own righteousness. Let the righteousness of Jesus Christ come into life, into your life abundantly, so that let the Holy Spirit make a decision for you. Let the Holy Spirit lead your life. Let the Holy Spirit guide your life so that the Holy Spirit gives a better conscience because the Bible says, the, the Spirit of Jesus is your friend. The Spirit of Jesus is your counselor. And the Spirit of Jesus is interceding for you every battle and every walk that you walk into. Sometimes in our life is that we have an immediate retaliation toward the anger. Uh, sometimes that I want to do something because that somebody has offended or somebody trespassed me. But then we trespass our Lord Jesus Christ or the God, the law of God, all the time. We have our iniquity. We have our transgressions. We have our sins. And that this maybe is a time that we say, God, you know, I know somebody, people that have a trespasses, trespasses, and I do have anger. But then I know your heart, Lord. I know God, you are God of love, and you are the God of the forgiveness. And you forgive us only when we confess that we are sinner. And maybe today, as we should come to God. Uh, if there is a small leak into your spiritual life and the uh, uh, battle that you're walking to every day, so maybe let God, put the more God into the decision that you make. Maybe you're making a marriage decision. You're making a, a job decision. Maybe you're making a, a decision in your life that uh, will change your lifetime uh, and the direction that you walk into. Uh, or avenue that you are walking into, that you have a, a right corner that you have to go to make a right turn. And ask God, every decision that you make, let God guide you. And this is what the Bible says, do not do things out of anger, or do not retaliate before God gives you a sign to do so. Let's pray. Father, as we come, and uh, I ask you to uh, guide us, Lord. Uh, although that uh, we are fighting a battle, uh, and sometimes we lose, and uh, sometimes we are depressed, sometimes we are uh, stressed out, 
And uh, every decision of our life, uh, maybe our marriage, maybe our job, uh, maybe uh, our studies, and every corner that we have to make a decision. We invite you, Lord, so that uh, give us the, the wisdom, give us the knowledge, give us the guidance, so that we can make a decision, not out of our anger, not out of retaliation, but uh, out of wisdom and the guidance of the Lord Jesus. In your precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, we pray in your name. Amen.